Good afternoon. I'm going to present the LSU entry for the SCALE 2009 competition titled Large Scale Problem Solving Using Automated Code Generation and Distributed Visualization. We have identified four cornerstones that need to be addressed in order to be able to solve real world problems on today's and tomorrow's large scale computing resources. And our SCALE 2009 entry is centered around these cornerstones. These are first the programming productivity in order to model complex equations such as for example the Einstein equations. One needs to code the equation so that a computer can solve them and that is often a complex step. We use the Cactus framework to couple different physics modules and once the code has been created it is necessary to execute the code in a scalable manner on large systems. In this demonstration, we are using the Ranger supercomputer in Austin, in Texas. We are running on 2,000 cores of Ranger with a highly scalable code using the Cactus framework and the Carpet Adaptive Mesh Refinement infrastructure that we have developed for this. Finally, once the simulation is running and producing results, it is important to have the sufficient I.O. bandwidth in order to write the results out to disk to be able to post-process them and also for the fourth and last cornerstone, interactive visualization in order to be able to analyze, visualize and understand the results that are created in the simulation. And in the following slides, we will go through each of these cornerstones in more detail and follow with an interactive demonstration. Let me first begin with the motivation. One of the physics problems that interests us is the gamma ray burst grand challenge in astrophysics. Gamma ray bursts are the most energetic events in the universe and modeling gamma ray bursts requires expertise for many different kinds of physics. For example, general relativity to model black holes. And solving this problem, modeling it on a computer, requires at least petascale computing due to the large length and time scales that are involved in such systems. <coughs> to model the Einstein equations, we have created the McLachlan code. The Einstein equations are an incredibly complex system of equations, of partial differential equations, and it is virtually impossible to code these equations by hand correctly. We are therefore using automated code generation that takes the Einstein equations and creates complete cactus modules, optimized maybe for a particular architecture, and automated code generation allows us to modify the implementation of the equation without modifying the equations themselves without introducing accidental errors, and thereby also using higher order discretization methods, playing with new, maybe machine dependent optimizations, addressing new hardware that may come out, and in our case also employing curvilinear coordinate systems to increase the accuracy of our calculations. <laughs> we have developed a cactus framework and the carpet adaptive mesh refinement infrastructure in order to run simulations on the largest supercomputers. Cactus is a software framework for high performance computing. One of its major strengths is collaborative code development. This also allows coupling different kinds of physics, for example, the Einstein equations and hydrodynamics to address real world complex systems. We've also developed Carpet, a scalable adaptive mesh refinement driver for the Cactus framework that employs a hybrid communication model combining MPI and OpenMP. And on the top right hand, side of the slide, you see a Cactus scaling benchmark showing the performance of uh, the carpet adaptive mesh refinement driver with nine levels of mesh refinement from 16 to up to 12,000 cores. The black line indicates the performance on Ranger where we are today running our scale 2009 entry. And this is a weak scaling graph, so the ideal scaling line would be a horizontal line. We are very close to ideal scaling up to very large numbers, of course. And the center of the bottom is also an I.O. benchmark, also for Ranger, showing the aggregate, the total bandwidth that we have. Large numbers are better. And as you see, as we increase the number of cores, the total bandwidth that we can achieve increases up to about 10 gigabytes per second. <coughs> Finally, it is not enough to run simulations in a black box. It is also important to interact with these, with these simulations, for example, to examine the current state of the simulation to debug the physics, to understand the interaction between the many components that make up such a simulation, and also to ensure good performance and scalability 
since performance comes only from the smooth, in smooth interaction between the many components running in the simulation. It's also important to detect errors early since these simulations are typically expensive to run. We have a web server built into the simulation that allows this kind of interaction that I'm going to demonstrate in a minute. And we can also announce important events from the simulation to web portals, to Twitter, and to Flickr. If you're interested in listening into our simulation, you can go to Twitter slash numrel, and then you should receive an update every few minutes about the current state of the simulation. Here we are connected to a web server running on our Scale 2009 simulation on 2000 cores of Ranger. This web server is built into the Cactus framework and allows people to monitor and also modify and steer the simulation if you have logged in and have the corresponding privileges. You see here that this is a simulation called Generic Binary Black Holes. This is actually a web server running in the Cactus simulation. And up here, you see some generic information about the simulation. For example, we are currently at iteration 129,000 of the simulation. The simulation term is 777. And the speed of the simulation is about 6.4 simulation time per hour. So this simulation has been going on for well over 100 hours. On the right side here, could you scroll down? Uh, some details about the simulation. This is a parallel cactus job running on 500 MPI processes, four threads per MPI process. So these are indeed 2048 cores of Ranger. It is running on Ranger. It was started by Ishnet, which is myself. And it was started up about 15 hours ago. And each iteration of the simulation takes about three seconds. Uh, we can also interact and do the simulation with a prototype of a debugging interface. If you go to debugging, <coughs> We can, for example, parse the simulation. Interacting with the simulation, or take a single step, interacting with the simulation may take some time. Since the simulation is actually running on full speed, the web server is just running as a sidekick, does not get the VU power. So it may take several seconds to respond. The simulation is currently in this function, spherical surface, check state. If you single step again, it moves into dissipation at each of these iterations, which takes three seconds. A whole schedule tree is executed. Now, non-checker checking for invalid simulation results. And if you continue, the simulation runs again. Each second that we hold the simulation costs us 2,000 seconds, about half an hour in computer time that we lose on Ranger. So I'm going to talk a bit about the uh, visualization uh, challenges that are given by simulations such as the numeric relativity uh, cactus simulation that has been described earlier. Uh, as simulations like that generate uh, large data sets, we need tools, visualization tools, that are able to handle um, data of, of that magnitude. And we define the following uh, requirements for the visualization system. Um, first of all, we want to build interactive visualization system, so it needs to have five frames per second or more. Uh, the system needs to be responsive for, to changes in uh, the focus if the user moves to a not a region of interest, it has to be done in uh, at most two seconds. Uh, very important is that the system is handling large data sets and provides a scalability path for the future. Uh, and the actual image uh, that the visualization system produces of high quality and high resolution. And the system enables uh, collaborative visualization. So once it's built, uh, multiple users can take advantage of it. Our method is based on the visualization pipeline, which is a common concept in the visualization world. Uh, the visualization process is described as a five-stage pipeline uh, with the data source stage, a filtering stage for selecting the data of interest, geometry generation, then rendering creates actual images, and uh, finally the display where the user actually sees the, the images that are generated. Uh, our the uh, visualization system uses distributed resources in order to actually improve the visualization application. And uh, we will use an integrated approach where we take advantage of all types of resources that are available for us, including networks, uh, storage, uh, compute resources, and visualization resources in order to build a high quality visualization application. So our system has three components. It has a data server, a distributed data server, a parallel renderer, and uh, the client with a video streaming and interaction. Uh, we want to use the distributed data servers uh, because that improves uh, the uh, 
uh, data transmission rate uh, over uh, local uh, data, over local disk I.O. We want to use parallel rendering and rendering clusters because they improve the capacity of the visualization uh, system to interactively render uh, large amounts of data. Uh, and since those uh, kind of clusters are not available locally usually, we need to have a way to connect to them uh, using uh, video streaming. In, this, in our case, we have uh, integrated the Sage library and uh, to interact with the visualization system. And we have developed uh, new interaction methods using tangible devices uh, to enable remote interaction. For the data server, uh, we see that the uh, disk I.O. rate is limited uh, and limits uh, the ability of the user to browse through large data sets. So our approach is to use remote machines to store data in the main memory. And that's because transferring over the network, transferring data over a uh, 10 gigabit network is actually faster than transferring it from local disk. So a few details of, uh, of our distributed data server. Uh, in order to support uh, the high data transmission rate, we need to uh, be able to use uh, protocols uh, such as the uh, UDT, which is a UDP-based library, so non-standard protocols that support the uh, uh, high uh, data throughput. We've also implemented uh, a remote access system that supports a large number of operations per second, which is very important for future scalability of, uh, of our visualization approach. Our demonstration uh, is going to show a simulation running uh, on TAC uh, on the Ranger compute cluster there using 2048 cores. The simulation uh, has, uh, is generating data that is uh, stored on uh, Loni data storage. But then from that storage, the data is being loaded into data servers, which are basically computers that we use to temporarily load the uh, data. And we use four nodes on Eric and four nodes on Louis um, that are then functioning as temporary data servers and serve data to our visualization cluster. The visualization cluster is uh, located uh, at LSU uh, on the main campus. Uh, it has eight nodes, um, and it uh, transmits a video basically to, to the user that is uh, local. In the case of this recording, it's uh, going to be here, which is in a different building than, than the one where the actual server is located. In the case of the demonstration that you're going to see, it's going to be at CC Grid. Uh, the data has uh, uh, resolution of 1024 cubed uh, and uh, has 20 time steps that we're actually going to be able to load in the main memory of the remote machines. Um, our results have shown uh, that uh, loading data from the remote servers takes uh, about two seconds for a time step as compared to about uh, 13 seconds when loading the data from, from the local disks. Here we are showing the visualization system running that uh, have been described. Uh, this is uh, 42 gigabytes of data distributed across the Lani network. Uh, uh, this is being rendered uh, on a graphics cluster at LSU and then streamed uh, here locally uh, uh, using uh, high definition video streaming. Uh, we are using tangible interaction devices locally to control the remote visualization. And each of these components, uh, data rendering, display and interaction, uh, can actually be located everywhere. So uh, the system uh, supports uh, collaboration. That means users at multiple locations uh, can see the video stream and could use uh, tangible devices to steer the visualization. The system satisfies the requirements that we've described. Uh, that is, uh, we have uh, under two seconds uh, for the system to respond when changing the region, region of interest. In this case, uh, moving to a different time step. We have interactive frame rate, uh, high quality video, and uh, collaboration. You can see now uh, how uh, Cornelius is uh, steering the visualization. Uh, the visualization is controlled by tangible devices uh, controlled, uh, developed by him. So now we move to a different view. Uh, here is just to show how uh, the data activity is happening on, on the cluster when uh, we change the, the time step. So basically moving to a different time step. Uh, and Cornelius is now going to move to a different time step. And we're going to see here a spike in activity uh, as data gets transferred over the network uh, from the Lani servers to the visualization cluster. Uh, here, this view shows the activity of the local video stream. Uh, it shows uh, basically the Sage video streaming, uh, how it consumes bandwidth uh, 
on the order of 50 megabits per second right now, but it can shoot up even over 100 megabits per second. But so this project has been supported by a number of people uh, and uh, groups, institutes, and particularly we want to acknowledge uh, funding for uh, the CIRL, Alpaca, and the CyberTools projects. 